I need to video what I'm doing. And this one, I got a different color on each ear so I know who's who and who I've fed. And we weigh them on a little scale here each time we feed them to make sure they're gaining weight. And uh, it's doing much easier in the beginning. The first three days it takes to get them started. Um, it's a lot of force feeding. You have to be really careful not to get it up your nose. When they came in, their eyes weren't open. They were probably a week old. Um, they were. We had them and had been feeding them about three days before their eyes started opening. So they're just about two weeks old now. And this one still likes to be a little difficult. The other two are getting much easier. Sometimes they just take turns on who's going to be good and who's going to be difficult. Yeah, you don't want it. Yeah, you don't want it. You need it though. Now, over the years, I found that most baby rabbits will fight it and don't want to be fed and are very difficult. And he says, if you're not careful, they'll aspirate the formula. I keep a towel on my lap because they can be very messy trying to avoid it. Hi, baby. But if they don't get enough to eat, that's why we weigh them every time we feed them. If they don't get enough to eat, they uh, starve to death. And we use a special formula for the cottontails. And we weigh them to get an approximate amount we should be feeding them. We should be feeding them one and a half to two teaspoons per ounce of body weight in a 24 hour period. So you break that up into, if you can only get a little bit in at a time, you have to have more feedings. When they start taking more at a time, then you don't have to feed them as often. And then you have to account that they're growing, and so you'll have to increase the food. So, got to do a little bit of math. Are you going to take it better now, I hope? There he goes, starting to suck on it now. So this is his second syringe. These are three milliliter syringes. We start them off with one milliliter syringes and figure we're doing good if we can get one to one and a half milliliters in in the beginning. Um, the others are taking this much better. This one says, nope, still gonna be slow. And I gave him one, one of these syringes full, three milliliters, before I started videoing and I fed one of the other babies which sucked down four syringefuls real quick, which is 12 milliliters. And then I realized I should be sharing this with you guys, sorry. Sometimes I'm half asleep when I'm doing it. Let me go get the next one. Are you gonna eat for me this time, huh? She did good this morning, but yesterday she was refusing it. They, they, they have good and bad days. Looks like she's gonna go for it. Watch that syringe. Look at that, look at her suck that down. It's a new syringe, so it works pretty good. These syringes stiffen up um, after a few uses. And so it can be, you have to be really careful if you're helping, helping to push it a little bit on these sticky syringes, you can end up choking them if you're not careful. Now you're just gonna chew on the nipple, you're not gonna suck on it? They have to eat it at their pace. It's really nice and convenient when they suck it down fast, but uh, that's not how it always goes. This is with the three baby bunnies. I spent about 45 minutes last night up feeding babies. And that was just in one feeding. They are doing much better than they were. Choke, choke, choke. cutest little tongue. Hopefully I'm at an angle where you guys can see. You know more? They are starting to nibble grasses in alfalfa. Got a little bit of water in the cage so they can get to that when they want. We don't usually add that until they're about two weeks old. And usually we start adding alfalfas and grasses and things in small amounts as soon as their eyes open. And 
and gradually they'll start eating more of the, the natural grass and alfalfa and eating less formula. She says, no, I don't want any more. But we just got took the first three days to get them stabilized and get over the hump on feeding, make sure they got back to the weight they came in at, and then I had another volunteer take them for two days for me so I could get some rest. And then I, they did good the first day and night, and she was really faithful and got up in the night to feed them early in the morning. She's not a morning person, but she did it. Thank you, Tori. <laughs> Kayan has done baby bunnies with me for years. But uh, when I took them back, they were about the same weight. And it's like, no, we need to force you down a little more food. And it just takes time. Sometimes they eat, sometimes they don't. Yep, come on. This is when they do. It's really nice, but they don't always do it. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could force feed too much or too fast. Or if you have the wrong kind of formula, it could make them sick. Or if the temperature isn't warm enough, it has to be nice and warm, not too hot, but cold um, can really make them sick too. So it's just a very, very careful balance. See, the pink mark in the ear is just so I can tell who's who. It's a little sharpie. Oops. Bring this up so you can see. And blue in the ear and then black mark in the ear. So I know which ones I fed and which ones I haven't, and that helps me keep track of who's who with the weights. See, they're starting to nibble the alfalfa. Just pour it out of the way. Time for dinner. Hi, little guys. See who I get first. Oh, it's pink one. Okay. She ate good for a little while. I've marked their ears with different colors just to help me tell who's who. And I have a purse. You gonna show them how you weigh them? Yep, thanks for reminding me. I turned it on, but then I forgot. It's 2.2 .2 ounces. You're finally starting to gain a little bit. Now, why, why do you weigh them, Sue? I weigh them to make sure they're gaining weight. And I, I talked earlier when I was feeding about you weigh the baby bunnies when they come in so we get an idea of how much they should be eating in a 24 hour period. This formula recommends for cottontails uh, one and a half to two teaspoons per ounce of body weight um, in a 24 hour period. So. Uh, it takes a little while to get them to eat what they need. So when you first start, you might start them off with several small feedings. And you have to go slow enough that they don't choke on it. And um, sometimes these guys will actually nurse and, and suck on the little nipple and, and that makes feeding a whole lot easier, but sometimes they don't do that. And if you talk and make noise, it just makes them more scared. Come on, baby. You ready for some, some dinner? Come on. And sometimes you force feed, sometimes they willingly eat. So I weigh each of the babies to make sure they're gaining weight. It takes about three days just to get them to accept the formula. It's all force feeding. And then once they start you know, after three days, it's like, oh, I think they're finally starting to uh, take it better. We'll have a day or two that's good, and then we'll have more bad days. So some will eat good, and some will not, and I wish it would just suck, but it doesn't really want to right now. They put their feet up to knead, but they also put their feet up to push you away, which is what this one's doing.
maybe cross your fingers. It really does take a huge amount of patience um, to do this. And I'm so fortunate that uh, I have a sweet, sweet, beautiful wife that has that those kinds of patients that are willing. So we work together as a team and and be able to uh, to rescue these little guys and get them returned back to the wild where they belong. Now the, these uh, these three baby cottontails. Um, Basically, their den was disturbed. The uh, family was gardening and in the process of preparing the ground for their garden, they ended up uh, basically uh, cutting open a, a, a cottontail den. And of course, with the disturbance, you know, mom abandoned and the babies were, were left orphaned. And the people, you know, they're very concerned about it. They, they really didn't mean to... Uh, to cause a problem and they're very grateful that Susan and I are here in our wildlife foundation to give these little guys a chance because they felt so bad at uh, disturbing their den. Says, nope, he's not going to behave either. <laughs> a little bit more for you. Then I'm going to take a quick break, put some hot water under that formula so that it will be warm enough for the, the next one. And hopefully that one will be more cooperative so you can see how much fun it is when I do eat good. This is the biggest one, if I'm right. 2.5 ounces, yep, you're the one that's been eating better for me. So maybe, and he woofed down like four syringes full for me earlier today. So maybe we'll be lucky enough that he'll do it again, but there's no guarantees. Oh, yeah, he's looking, he wants it. And if I have a fresh syringe and it's not sticky, they can actually suck it down themselves. Uh, I think this one's starting to stick a little bit. It only takes a few times before it starts to stick. So you have to give a little bit of pressure to help it. But you can see how much faster it is when they want to help. But if you go too fast, you get it in their lungs. And it's like, okay, that one's empty. Let me get a refill. Like I said, this is this seems like so much fun, and if this is all you saw, everybody would think they want to do this. But this is the rare, rare feeding. He says we've been feeding them since before their eyes opened. And that's just about a week now, isn't it? Yeah, we've had them for a good week plus. And the syringe do get sticky and, and tough. So after a while, we throw them out and get a fresh syringe. And I did open a new syringe today. I might have just grabbed one of the old ones. I'm not sure. So that's two. Hey, kids, you got to do your math. The syringe holds, holds three millimeters, milliliters, or cc's, I sometimes call them. And I, so three milliliters times two so far. Tell me how much that is. And now we're working on our third one. And it is sticking. And sometimes when it sticks and they can't suck and get it, it just frustrates them. So he's going to have enough now. So he only ate one more milliliter out of this. So he had two full ones, which would be six milliliters plus one. That makes seven milliliters. So that's what I'm going to write down on him. Now I'm going to go back and give the others some more, not on film, because I don't want to bore you to death in the next half hour having you just sit watching me feed these guys. But I did want to show you the bigger bunny. And, uh, because he's just about getting ready to release. He's right here. Yeah, let me take the little birds off the top and let a little more light in so that you can see him better. Hopefully I won't scare him too bad, because he is pretty flighty. I don't even take him out of the cage anymore. What people don't realize, Actually, maybe from above would be better for him. Okay. So let a little more light in, and you'll get a better, better view. I don't even take him out of the way of now. I come over this side. Wherever you can get a good view. 
He has a box to hide in. He's got a little bit bigger bed. He eats a lot of alfalfa and things. And when there's noise and stuff going on, he won't eat. But let me, it's okay. We'll let him see. You can see how easy they get timid and frightened. Can you smell that? Is that what you want? And so I've been very carefully just early morning and late evening before bed giving him a feeding and we've been reducing the amount he's getting because he's just about ready to go off the feed. He's about five weeks and usually they can be okay without their mom anywhere from four to six weeks. You know if everything's really good they can nurse for six weeks but Sometimes they get separated much sooner than that. But I'll show you how cute they are. They grow up to be. And uh, several years ago, we said 80% didn't make it of people that had raised rabbits. And that's true. It's really rough to raise up baby rabbits. Finding this new formula, learning the techniques gives us a little bit better odds. Um, so we're probably, I'm afraid to say anything about this year's good so far, but you know, I'm probably lucky if you get 50% with experience. Uh, knock on wood, so far of the four we've had come in this year, we're, we're doing okay with all of them. But it does take a lot of time. And, and they're not something you can just pick up and cuddle because they will be afraid and they will try to escape and they could hurt themselves, break a leg or something. So anyway, that's that's uh, how we feed our baby rabbits. And uh, they're, we're very excited, like I said, about 50% uh, survival rate is what's normal. Out of the four that we've gotten so far in the last uh, couple of weeks, we have actually uh, have been successful with all four. So, uh, we're, so we're very, very happy about that. The, the little ones are doing quite well. And uh, we'll go ahead and, oh, she's gonna give sure, a little he, bit more. I would love some more. I'll move the box so you can see him better. Couldn't see him good with the box before. And as, and as Susan said, um, domestic rabbits make wonderful pets. Wild rabbits like this, these baby cottontails they don't, they have a very strong fight or flight instinct, which basically means anything at all that makes, that frightens them, they're gonna try to run like mad. And in, in the process, uh, if they jump out of your hands and they hit the floor hard, they, at this age, they break bones very easily uh, and it can have internal injuries and then we can lose them. So we, we really have to uh, give them as little human contact as possible uh, just let them be so so that they don't become injured and and like I said this little guy right here is really just right on the edge of being released back to the wild at, at this age they're usually uh, mom mom's pretty much done feeding them and they're pretty much just kind of wandering around the uh, the fields just feeding themselves and so that's kind of where he is so we're, we're very excited to be able to get this one released. We had some earlier this year that, we, that we've already got back to the wild. And so this is our, our newest little little success story, along with the, the other three babies that uh, are, are still only about two weeks of age. Well, we're going to let you guys go, um, and we hope to talk to you soon. And my from my sweet, beautiful wife, Susan. And I, uh, you guys have a good night. Good night. We can't cross it. The too wide for us to cross. Is it too wide? Yeah. Uh, we can't cross it without getting wet. We can go over here and cross. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is. Okay, well, just the other side of the fence then. And those. Well, in case you're uh, curious what we're doing, uh, I'm Martin Tyner with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation with my beautiful wife, Susan.
and uh, we're picking out a, a good place for a cocktail rabbit to be released back to the wild. So that's what we're doing right now. So we can just get over here. I've seen a lot of cottontails right over there under that Russian olive, that direction. Do have lots of friends. This is one of our uh, cottontail fields. It's got, still has some grass, which is a good sign. And there's some water close by. And so it's about as good a location as we can find for him. Especially because we've been in a, a drought in fact, I just saw a uh, news report that this has been the worst drought uh, here in Utah uh, since the 1860s. Let's take him a little more into the rabbit brush sage brush too. Just over here. So as bad as the uh, drought has been, we did get a little bit of rain a couple of days ago, but not nearly enough. So we'll go ahead and give our little cottontail. This will be good. Anywhere you like. Let Susan do the release. Unzip a couple of sides. And you just unzip the top and tip it over. Yeah. I can unzip the top too. Hmm? I said I can unzip the top too, but that way. Anyway, let me get my shadow out of the way. This is our little cottontail. He's just kind of nibbling a bit here. Hi, little one. Get a little baby. Get out of your way. There we go. It's evening. Figure you don't want to. It's it's cooling down, and rabbits tend to like to run around more at night. And there's oh, a early morning, late, late evening. yeah. This this is actually uh, right where I found a lot of cottontails in this area. So he'll have his or she will have her her, her friends to to deal with and lots of cover. Said so lots of grasses to feed on. So she should be doing just fine. So yeah, just the slightest little noise, you know, spooks them. But that's good. That's the way they're supposed to be. Her whole container out because she's too wild for me to just catch. So that's our little cottontail release. She's gotten big since we first She has. Her. Don't know what to do with all the space, do you, kid? Like a cottontail, be spooky. 
That's what keeps you alive. So that's our little... Oh, she's in the bush. Okay, right I there. I see her there. She just kind of vanished. Yep. That's, they hide really, really good. They just blend right into the cover. And that helps to keep them safe. Well, anyway, my little friend, we're going to leave you to your new world. And uh, watch out for the coyotes and foxes and eagles.